Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and it is always a pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. Let me tell you about the past few days. I am simply encouraged and I pray that you are encouraged as well. Well, for the past two days, we have, oh my God, we have hit so many challenges. And, but to God be the glory, I thank God for the challenges. On Monday, we did our video for ministry. And uh, I had to learn a new system. And uh, for for videoing and trimming and things of that nature. Well, I got ready to turn on my laptop and uh, it wouldn't do facial recognition and all those other things. So I spent the bigger part of the day trying to get all of that straightened out. Okay. Then, which it took me all day long. And I'm telling you this because I want to encourage your heart. I really do. I want to encourage your heart, mind, and your spirit. And, and just to let you know, do not give up. Uh, we are going to face obstacles along this journey. I am learning more and more simply to give God all of the thanks, all of the glory, and to ask Him for His instructions on what I'm supposed to do next. What is it that you would have me to do next? Because I clearly do not know what to do. I am facing something. I am in the midst of something that is just really, really aggravating me. And I need to do, I need to know my next. So, uh, I end up setting up another system. We have, so now we have both of our desktops up and, and operational. But I had to spend some time with uh, inputting the software into the new desktop, which I should have done a while ago. But how many of us know that we don't necessarily always move when God tells us to move? Some of us become so very, very um, just... Uh, we don't move when God tells us to move. That's just it. And so I had to spend some time doing that. Well, that was Monday. Yesterday, I get up and I am preparing to do radio. And if many of you did see it, uh, I started. I was prepared to do radio. But I don't know what happened with desktop number one the mics were not working everything was just going haywire and I'm like God what is going on here help me Holy Spirit what's going on here so I wasn't able to do radio yesterday I have no idea what happened uh, something with our microphones into the desktop I don't know what was going on but anyway I get up this morning and I'm like, okay, I, I, you know, I worked on it yesterday, get up this morning and it worked itself out. I'm telling you this because yesterday we were going to share a word that says work through it. And that's exactly what we're doing. We are working through the obstacles. The best way to work through any obstacle is to stay in tune with God. Make sure that you know the voice of God, that you hear his word, that you lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. That is his word. That is his promise. I know that he is faithful. He is just and he will fulfill just that. So, yes, we are going to have those frustrating moments. Oh, it got better on yesterday. Let me tell you. So I get everything all set up. I have a five o'clock meeting with my virtual assistant, which we do biweekly. At 430, 415, somewhere up in there, the internet goes down. 
it did not come back up until 545 and I'm just sitting there and I'm like okay God what in the world is going on then where I had had everything all set up I also had a 630 meeting with uh, sisters in unity and something was going on with the speakers and uh, listen it was just for the past two days it has really really been a whole lot a lot a lot of but to God be the glory I just thank him for uh, perseverance I thank him for because he knows those times that listen I was absolutely frustrated and I was saying listen something has got to give uh, this is getting on my nerves Lord and we can be honest with God and on Monday when I was going through what I was going through and I had to set up desktop number two, which mind you can see I can be transparent and I don't mind telling on myself. I can tell on myself because I don't want nobody else to do it. You, it, It's better if it comes from me. <laughs> okay. Desktop number two I have had for, listen to this, are you ready? I believe it's going on two years. Yeah, I set it up and and put the Balance of Life logo in it and, and that, but I didn't do nothing else with it. So I simply said, well, Holy Spirit, I thank you because you are pushing me to be greater. This is all about me being greater and doing what you have called me to do. He didn't say it was going to be easy, but when we are pushed when we need to get to the next level it is so uncomfortable and yes it can be so frustrating the key is is to recognize that you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you and there is nothing that you cannot do as long as you stay focused seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all those things that you need will be added unto you Remember to uh, seek and ask for the things that are spiritual because if I did not have knowledge and wisdom and an understanding of how to set up the new system and I had to put in new software, I had to uh, attach all of my Yahoo accounts and Gmail accounts. So it took all of my Monday and by the time I was done, I, listen, my head was like, oh my God, you're talking about a day of work. But I am grateful. And I know that as I stay focused, as I keep looking to the hills from whence cometh my help, as I, as I keep saying, Lord, I want to be in line with your will. I want to hear your voice. I need to know what to do with what you gave me. You didn't give me these things just to sit idle. You gave them to me for the work of the kingdom of heaven. And so I need wisdom. I need knowledge. I need understanding. I need godly counsel. I need the spirit of the Lord. I need might, which is dominus power. I need all of those things in order to do what you have called me to do. And without them, I can do nothing. And I am learning more and more and more. As long as I keep that in the forefront, as long as I keep that in the focus, and then I have to step aside and I have to let God be God. That's another thing. We all have to get to that point that we have to let God be God. Now, here's something else that I have to work through. Because I couldn't get into my laptop, I have to now reconstruct the next issue of Hope and Truth magazine because the articles were already typed and written, the layout was already done. But you know what? I say, okay, God, 
where do I go from here? I'm not going to sweat over it. I'm not going to allow it to frustrate me. I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm going to let God be God. Okay, God, what is it that you want to say? I'm going to lean and depend on you for what you want to say. If I wrote something that was contrary to what you wanted me to share, I repent. If you want to bring it back to my remembrance and I rewrite it, I'll accept that too. But I just want to make sure that your will is being done in my life on earth as it is in heaven. And so we have to change the narrative. And we have to work out our perspective as to how things are flowing, how we perceive things. We can't always give any leadway to the enemy. Stop saying, oh, here he go attacking me again. Uh-uh. No, turn that thing around. You know what, God? You're pushing me for greater. I don't understand it, but I know you got your hand in this, and I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to let you lead and guide me, because what you are about to produce in me, oh God, it's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. It is for the furtherance of the kingdom of heaven, and that's the way we have to look at it. Scripture tells us, in all things, give thanks. That's right. In all things, we are to give thanks. No matter what it is, we are to say thank you. So let's look up that scripture. In all things, give thanks. To God be the glory. I'm just sitting over here working so wonderfully. Have the new system up. Uh, desktop number one, desktop number two. Just giving God all of the glory, all of the praise for what he is doing in this season with Angel Ferguson Ministries. So let's take a look at 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, 18th verse. It says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. That's right. So whatever you're going through, let us learn to give thanks. I may not understand it. It may aggravate me. And guess what? It might frustrate me. Some things might aggravate me to a point I might get mad. I didn't say sin. I might get mad. I might even shed a tear. Oh my God. But I'm going to give thanks. And I am learning to cut through all of those other emotions and just give thanks. So Monday, while I was sitting there and I literally had to learn how to use the new video editing in Windows because I kept seeing the notice that they were doing away with the old version. I downloaded the new version, but I was still using the old version. Well, Monday, guess what I had to do? I had to use the new version. I did not have a choice. Sometimes we can ignore God telling us it's time to shift. It's time to go to the next level. But we will continue in the same pattern because it's familiar, because it's comfortable. And it will get to a point that you don't have any choice but to shift. We do not have any choice but to grow. We don't have any choice. Because guess what? He will cut off our comfort zones. That's right. He will remove the comfort zones and he will put us in a position that says, you know what? I introduced this new way to you a while ago. Now it's time to step into the paint. Now it's time to put it to use. So I want to say to you today, work through it. Work through it. Yes, you are working in the area that God has called you to. But we have to grow in those areas. We cannot remain stagnant. And growth is uncomfortable. Stretching is uncomfortable. Growth is uncomfortable because it pulls us from familiarity. It causes some things to shift within us. And it's not pleasant. Oh, after we get to that new place, we're all excited. 
As a matter of fact, we are excited when we hear that God is going to allow us to grow in some areas. But the process of growth, we're not happy about that because we have to give up some things. We're in unfamiliar territories at that point in time. So I want to say to you, be encouraged, men and women of God. Be encouraged on today. Don't throw in the towel. Just begin to give thanks for all things. Say, Lord, I thank you. I don't understand what's going on. Lord, I thank you. And he's going to work it out. You will begin to receive what you need to receive for your next. If you're just tuning in, you're tuning in to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson. I missed you all on yesterday. Uh, and I'm listen, let's just be transparent. I was so aggravated. I think it was about 3 or 4 o'clock that I realized, you know what, I just could have uploaded something from a previous broadcast so that I didn't miss radio all on yesterday. Uh, and so guess what? I have to repent for that because there was a ram in the bush. I was just astonished because I'm like, I just used the radio mapping on Friday to do live Bible study. I just, I just did it. And I had just used it on Monday to do the live video so what happened in the night because I didn't change anything I didn't I didn't do anything and that's how the enemy is he will come in like a thief in the night and if we are unaware if we're not paying attention we will be caught off guard and even if he does happen to slip in don't get upset don't get frustrated don't throw in the towel. Give all thanks. Say, Lord, I thank you. I give you all thanks on and praise. Now I need some wisdom. I need knowledge. I need understanding to get me through this next phase. Whatever it is, I need to know how to work through it. Before I go any further, I want to quarterly invite you, quarterly invite you to our virtual writing workshop September the 2nd and the 16th during this particular workshop we are going to discuss the importance of creating a workbook for your expertise so what I'm going to do is I'm going to air it here via our radio broadcast and we will share live video as well so that's what we're going to do the workshop is designed for those who are in ministry or in business to take your expertise, your teaching. So if you are um, a teacher of any sort and you are, say, a mentor or anything like that, you can take your notes, your teaching tools and turn them into a workbook. We will also discuss extracting questions from your material so that you can then develop a review section for your workbook. So the next time you have a conference or a seminar, you have ready-made material in workbook format for your attendees. Also, this is good for Bible study. If you are going to do a Bible study series, you can always go back and revisit it at another time uh, because we don't necessarily get a chance to cover all of our notes when we are teaching. So if you were to take all of your notes and put them in writing, you can put those into workbook format. This is also going to allow you to have residual income because after the conference, after the seminar, and then you might have some individuals that would like to purchase the Bible study workbooks, and that is going to benefit you as well. As a bonus, in preparation of getting ready for this virtual writing workshop, we put together some writing journals to accompany some books that we already have published 
so excited about that and so we're showing you different ways in this virtual writing workshop on how to benefit you so to God be the glory so excited about that once again the dates for the virtual writing workshop are September the 2nd and the 16th for more details please email us at the balance of life one at yahoo.com and we'll make sure that you have the links so that you can join in on the virtual workshop the video portion okay all right so I want to go further and read more of this word in Thessalonians the fifth chapter first Thessalonians the fifth chapter let's start at the first verse it says but of the times and the seasons brethren ye have no need that I write unto you for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape but ye brethren are not in darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief ye are all the children of light and the children of the day we are not of the night nor of darkness therefore let us not sleep as do others but let us watch and be sober for they that sleep sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night but let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet the hope of salvation for God have not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us that rather we rather we wake or sleep we should live together with him wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also ye do and we beseech you brethren to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves now we exalt you we exhort you brethren warn them that are unruly comfort the feeble-minded support the weak be patient toward all men see that none render evil for evil unto any man but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men listen to this rejoice evermore pray without ceasing and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you quench not the spirit despise not prophesyings prove all things hold fast that which is good abstain from all appearance of evil and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly and I pray God your whole spirit and your soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it brethren pray for us greet all brethren with an holy kiss I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren amen the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you amen so let's look at those nuggets let's look at those nuggets rejoice evermore rejoice again I say rejoice we also must take it to an account Isaiah 59 19 you know I've been in this scripture passage for a while now when the enemy comes in like a flood the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him I have been hearing that in my spirit and quoting it in my prayers and out loudly for the past couple of weeks now it has been in my spirit every time it reignites I quote it again when I hear it I quote it again I'm standing on that Word of God I'm meditating on that Word of God I believe in that word so listen rejoice evermore rejoice because that is a promise that when the enemy comes in like a flood which means he's going to come heavy a flood is meant to overtake a flood destroys things but the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against him 
So no matter what you are facing, no matter the obstacle, no matter the situation, it very well might frustrate you. You will probably get angry, but sin not. You will get mad, sin not. It might even make you cry. But rejoice evermore. It's going to turn around for your good. Why? Because all things work together for the good, for them who love him, for those who are called according to his purpose. It's going to turn around for your good. It is going to work out. Rejoice evermore. I'll say it again. I'll keep saying it. No matter what you are facing, you may not understand it. You ain't even do nothing. There's nothing you did. It worked yesterday. It worked this morning. But today, at this hour, you get ready to operate it, and it's not working. Well, to God be the glory. Father God, you know more than I do. Holy Spirit, reveal unto me what is going on. What's at work? What's happening here? Because I don't have a clue. And I can guarantee you this only because I've seen it work. I'm never going to tell you to believe in something that I haven't tried for myself. And so I asked the Holy Spirit, tell me what's going on. Tell me where to look. What am I supposed to do? And I'm going to wait on you. But in my waiting, I have other stuff to do. So why are you working on that? Why are you revealing this to me to do this and do that? Let me work over here. Rejoice evermore. Here's another nugget from 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Continue to pray. Ask, seek, knock. Give him thanks. There's, and, and a lot of times, those obstacles, those things that come to frustrate us are, in actuality, distractions. Because what am I supposed to be doing? I'm to be supposed to be focusing on something else. But this is frustrating me. Or, let me share this with you. I, on, I want to say Thursday... I was I decided to read the word and my Bible opened up to first Samuel the 30th chapter and we at this is the video we end up doing Monday part one teaching on the ephod okay now I did the video it took me forever to get it uploaded listen I was way past my time to do that too it's supposed to be up on our YouTube channel at 1130 I can I think it was like three or four I'm, I'm not even sure on Monday it's just been a couple of days but I give thanks honor honor to God what I want to say is is stepping into a new realm will cause the enemy to attack and uh, sabotage you also but even in that Continue to pray without ceasing. Give God all of the thanks, honor, and praise. Lord, I thank you. There is a ram in the bush. There's something that you want me to see. There's something that you want me to hear. You want me to shift. You're bringing me up out of uh, into another level in you of growth and maturity. And I, I have to learn this new area that I am in. But I can't focus on the attack itself. I must keep my focus on what am I supposed to do now. I cannot sit and cry and mellow and swallow in the frustration that my system is not working for me. I can't wallow in that. I have to know what to do next. I need to uh, move expeditiously. So that's why we are praying without ceasing. And then we get to, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit and then wait for his instructions. Follow those instructions. Despise not prophesying. 
when he gives you a word whether it's through dream or vision or another individual don't despise it does it line up with what God is saying to you and move accordingly prove all things hold fast that which is good God has great thoughts towards you he says it in uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11 abstain from all appearance of evil that takes me back to the word of watching my composure that's our time for today you know that I love you without measure simply because I believe in the potential of you be blessed on purpose because you are have a blessed day